Hi there. Welcome. I am excited to share another story for God's glory with you. Please, if you would like do you know the thumbs up subscribe so you can always catch these and share i always ask you to share these videos with people because i never know who's out there that needs to hear one of these videos and needs to know that god is still moving and he cares about us and he wants us to know him better tonight i have a woman named amy rylander and she's gonna come on and share about her prophetic walk with art and how she ministers with art and god talks to her about what she's going to be painting and sharing she's also going to be sharing about your identity in christ and how she navigated to understand more about who she is in him so hold on here she comes amy rylander So, hi, I'm Carrie Ann Barrett. I am a child of God, and I have a child of God on here tonight who's going to share her story for God's glory. And I love her story, and she's very creative, and she is very moved by the prophetic, by hearing the Lord and seeing the Lord and what he's doing. And I really am excited to share what Amy's going to do. So, don't forget, share this with somebody else because they're going to need to hear what God is doing and make them aware that God is moving right now, doing things he's still moving in our lives. So. Here you go. Welcome, Amy Rylander. Hi, Carrie. Thank you so much for having me. No, I'm excited to uh, share your story and talk to people about what you're doing. And as I said, you're an artist, right? So can you tell a little bit about what you're doing? Yes, I am a prophetic artist. Um, I've been doing it since 2004. First, I just started painting for fun and just to do a little something to have a little getaway. I was a homeschool mom. And and then the Lord took it and did some amazing things. And he's doing amazing things still with it. Wonderful. So, wow, that's awesome about your art. Now, you do your art in churches, right? And at home? Yes. Yes. I do it at home, in churches, conferences, wherever the Lord opens the door. Sometimes it's, you know, in businesses, sometimes for government, all kinds of things. So Really? For government, too? That's neat. Didn't yes. That one. Yes. So it's like intercession. So a lot of times, you know, I host National Day of Prayer. And so we do, you know, I'll paint in different meetings, gatherings where we're we're praying or we're seeking the Lord's wisdom for our city, our nation, our state. So wonderful. And I'll post a link. I love some your artwork. Well, things I've seen, I just love the one you did just recently with the oil. I think it was yesterday that I, you posted that. It was really wonderful. We need all yeah. the oil we can get right now. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I did that this past weekend. It was at a a ladies conference. So uh, sometimes I'll paint at different events and conferences. And so it's, it's just amazing with these paintings because, you know, you think you're painting it for that moment or that, you know, maybe a specific person. A lot of them are personal prophetic paintings. And then I post them and they, they're, they're timeless because it's the word of the Lord. And so it just, it can be relevant in all different times. And it's really just so beautiful. It's really beautiful. Now, I'm sure we'll get into a little bit more of this later, but how how are you being led to paint? So a lot of times, um, you know, I'll prepare just like you would prepare to preach a message if you were, you know, a preacher. Uh, And I would seek the Lord and, you know, I, I get scriptures. A lot of times he'll give me a phrase or some words or he'll give me a picture and he kind of pieces it together. And then when I'm actually painting, if it's a live painting, it just it'll just evolve how, whatever the Holy Spirit's showing me at the moment, whatever he's saying. So sometimes I, I start in one direction and I end up in a completely different direction. It just depends on the moment, you know, what the Lord is doing, what he's saying. So. Wow. So are you racing to get it done in the window that you have at the church or? No, you know, it's so miraculous. Uh, I mean, God is just so faithful, but every time I paint a painting and it doesn't matter if I have a 15 minute window or two hour window, it's like, he just shows me, it's like, it's just done on time. I don't, I don't even know how to explain that. It's always has, it's like right when it's wrapping up, he's like, okay, we're done. You're done. And then I just sign my name and I'm done. So it's never a rush. It's so strange. I know, but he just, he does it in a lot of time. Now, if I'm at home, you know, of course I can take my time and I'll, I'll take two, three hours, four hours to paint something. 
But, you know, when I do it live, a lot of times they're about 30 to 45 minutes each. So, um, but he just, every time it's like miraculous. That's just the right amount of time. Wow. That's awesome. I like to play, but I'm usually like in this creative spurt and then I want to be done. I don't want to spend, (laughs) like, I just not into that, but how did you get into it? How did you get into this painting? Yeah. So, um, like I said, I was a homeschool mom. And so, uh, my, I have three boys, a wonderful husband, three boys I was raising. And, you know, I just wanted a little something for me, a little getaway for me. And I started painting and the Lord spoke to me the first time I was actually just copying a picture of a calendar. And the Lord said, Amy, I've gifted you to use it for me. And I was like, oh, okay, Lord. And that's all he said. And so I thought, well, I guess he wants me to just bless his people. So I would paint still lives, paint things and just give them away. And so I did that for a season of time. I would paint and give them away. Um, And then one one night uh, in 2005, I was uh, I had just moved to Mississippi Uh, We were living in this little apartment and uh, everybody was in the bed that night. And actually, I got in bed and the Lord said, Amy, I want you to get up and paint. So I got up. um, It was about midnight Mm -hmm. (laughs) and uh, pulled my stuff out, put it on the kitchen table. And I'm like, "Okay, Lord, what do you want me to paint? And he said, I want you to paint the Holy Spirit. It's like. What does the Holy Spirit look like? Right. It's like, are you going to show me? Because I don't know what he looks like. And then he just gave me this very simple image, a very two-dimensional image of a of like a vessel with water just coming out and kind of swirling up. After that, he said, from now on, you're going to paint what I show you. So I, I haven't done any more still life since then. And so it's just kind of evolved. You know, at first it was just people would request something or... I would just, you know, I'd bring my sketch pad to church and just kind of doodle, you know, during worship. And I mean, honestly, it it kind of freaked me out at first because it would fit with what was happening. You know, it fit with what the the preacher was saying or what the worst was the word of the Lord that was being released. And I was like, what is happening? But then I realized, okay, this is this is God. This is you, Lord. It just slowly went from there. And I started, I had a spiritual father who really encouraged me to paint in front of people. He's like, I just keep seeing you painting up front, you know? And so one Sunday night, I brought my paints and canvas to church and I set up in the back of the room (laughs) and I just painted a picture of what the Lord showed me. I was like, okay, this is different. This is different. And from, it just kind of evolved from there. And And so I I paint all over, you know, travel and paint, do this full time. Um, Along with my husband, I lead a ministry. We we have a church that we pastor. And so that's this is full time, full time, everything, art and uh, ministry. Wow. And painting ministries. I mean, there's a thing. I don't know a lot of churches that have it. I've known a few that have. We used to have one at our church. Uh, Was it something you were aware of before you started? Uh, before I started the church? No. Well, we just started the church six years ago. So the painting actually was before our church. And so when I first started painting in churches, it was, I, we were part of another church and I had never seen it done before. I mean, I didn't know it was a thing. Um, someone had told me, you know, they do this in Bethel. And so I looked it up and saw, oh, wow, you know, they, this is a thing. It's a thing. I didn't even know what it was called. You know, it's called prophetic art, but I didn't know at the time when I was started doing it. <laughs> this yeah. is what it is. Then, you know, the Lord over time just, you know, he taught me about what it is. What is prophetic art? What's it for? What's its purpose? And uh, he said, Amy, I want you to write it down and and get it into a book so other people could learn this. And so I wrote it out and that was in 2000. Gosh, what year was that? Uh, it's, it's been a while. And then I sat on it for like, oh, 2013. That's right. Cause then after I wrote it, he said, I want you to, now I want you to teach it. So I didn't get it published. I was just, okay, let's, let's do this thing. So I started hosting uh, prophetic art schools and just, I would either do one, I would host one, or I would go somewhere else and have someone else host it. And I would teach. And it was so beautiful to see how everything that the Lord had showed me in the book actually worked. It was working. It was, 
it was real. Mm -hmm. Um, And then 2020, I finally finished the book, added a devotional part to it so that it was uh, an activation. Because I know with artists, you know, we don't want to just read about art. We want to do it, you know. And not everybody is an artist or don't think they're an artist or don't feel creative. And so the book is really just a tool to help activate that, that the creative part in each one of us that we are all creative. So, so the devotion is kind of like, I love teaching on identity, identity in Christ. And so uh, this book is kind of like, it's all about that, you know, who discovering who we are in Christ, who is God and who am I in God? And what does he think about me? What's my purpose? And, but yet through that, there's uh, art prompts so people can create too with what the Lord is showing them. It's really cool. And then now, have you always heard God? I mean, did you grow up in the church? Did you always have this prophetic gift? No, no, no. Uh, (laughs) I grew up uh, in a family. We did not know the Lord. We didn't serve the Lord. Um, I didn't really, I didn't meet the Lord till I was 20. Uh, I grew up in Connecticut. I moved to California when I was 15 with my mom and my stepdad. But once I met um, the man I eventually married, you know, I knew he had known the Lord, but I didn't really know. I would ask questions, but I didn't get a lot of answers. Well, right after we got married, one month after we got married, I encountered uh, Jesus in my living room. What? Um, yes. Come on, how'd that work? <laughs> <laughs> yes. My husband at our wedding, he completely returned to the Lord. So when I met him, he was backslidden and at our wedding, he decided to return to the Lord. And so now I'm married to a total stranger. And so I was, I was a mess. I was like, oh my gosh, I've just made the biggest mistake of my life. I don't even know this man anymore. And so one evening we were sitting in our living room and he had gotten me a Bible. I tried reading it. I didn't understand anything of it. It was like gibberish to me. But then this one particular night, my husband was like, Amy, you know, let's, let's read the Bible. Well, I was, I had some chores I wanted to do. So I was getting ready to do some ironing. And I said, well, just read to me. You just read something to me. And he's like, well, what, what do you want me to read? I said, it doesn't matter. Just pick something. And he said, well, what is, what is God saying to you? I was like, Like, what do you mean saying to me? (laughs) It just, it's like something in me just snapped. It just made me so upset because I'm wow. like, what do you mean, God? How could God talk to you? How do you know? How do you even know he's real? How do you know he's real? And so I was so mad and I walked out of the room and I was getting ready to go to bed. And we had gone to some pre-marriage counseling right before we got married. And the pastor um, had said, you know, don't ever go to bed angry, you know. And so I thought, you know, I'm not going to mess this up. <laughs> I'm not going to mess this up. So I went back into the living room and he's sitting on the couch and he, I just sat down. I didn't want to, I didn't even, you know, something made me sit. And now I know it was the Lord, but at the time I was like, I don't want to do this, but I'm going to do this. So I sat down, he's sitting there with his Bible open on his lap, completely oblivious that I was even upset. (laughs) And he's like, what's wrong? And I was like, I just, I just don't get it. I don't get it. I don't, I don't know how you can love a God that you don't even know is real. How can you know he's real? And he said, well, do you want to know? And I said, yes, I do. And so he put his hand over my eyes. He rebuked the devil for blinding me. And he began to pray in the spirit, which I'd never heard in before. He prayed in tongues. I never heard that before. Didn't know what that was. And I had my eyes shut and all of a sudden I just, I was started shaking. I was shaking and I saw this bright light. My eyes were closed, but this bright light far, far away started coming at me. It was like a ball of light. It just came right at me and just came to me and then enveloped me. And just like all of a sudden I was, I was encountering God and he was showing me that Jesus was showing me that he'd been waiting for me my whole life. And when he was dying on the cross, he was thinking of me and he was real. It felt like a moment that the encounter was felt like it was just moments, like seconds. And 
after we got done praying, uh, we realized an hour had passed. Wow. But I had, I was completely changed. I mean, like the first thing out of my mouth was I'm born again. (laughs) I didn't even know what that was. (laughs) Amen. Yeah. (laughs) Something big changed. That's the thing I said, I have to get baptized. It's like the Lord just downloaded everything in me. And um, I remember going to work the next day and I was just like, my conscience had just ballooned and it was like everything that was offensive to God was somehow now offensive to me. And I, it just felt like sandpaper in my, in my spirit. Now I know what that is, my spirit, man, but yeah, I've just never been the same, never been the same. Amen. Yeah. One minute with the king can really change everything. Changes everything. And so for the first, to answer your original question, the first five years of our marriage, I would ask my husband, what, what does God say? What's he saying? You know, <laughs> he, he discipled me, but then five years into it, you know, we moved uh, out of California to New Mexico and I sat down with the Lord to read my Bible and I began to hear his voice. Mm-hmm. I finally began to hear him for myself. So it was a journey. It was a journey. We've been married 30 years this year. Wow. Now, did he unlock the Bible for you too? A lot of people I've talked to when the Holy Spirit comes into them, they can suddenly read the Bible and it makes sense. Absolutely. It's like, it's like literally scales came off my eyes. Like suddenly I understood it. It's like, I, it was, it was life to me instead of where before it was like a different language. It was gibberish. Now it was like, Oh, you know, and it just, it became life and peace to me, you know? And so, I mean, I just love the word of God. It's so powerful. It's so powerful. And and that's how we learn his voice really is just reading his word is how we, we begin to recognize his voice and learn his ways. We get to know him. Yeah. Amen. And you were talking before about identity. Did your identity change as you got to know Holy Spirit? Absolutely. Absolutely. When I was, uh, so I was 20 when I got saved, when I was 30 is when I really just started seeking the Lord um, because I felt like I didn't know who I was. You know, I knew who, who everyone expected me to be. I knew who the church expected me to be, my husband, my children. And I, I started to really ask the Lord, well, who am I? You know, who, who am I? And he began showing me about, you know, he's like, well, Amy, what, what have you always loved to do? What have you loved? You know, and that's really where the the art came from. Because as a little girl, I loved to sing and dance and create. And I've always been, you know, even as an adult, I was crafty. You know, I'd love to do crafts, arts and crafts and make things. And, and so that's really why I thought, well, I'm going to get some paints, you know. And so I asked my husband for paints for Mother's Day in 2004. And that's when that the journey really began for prophetic art anyway. Yeah. So you've been walking in that. Was it, was it, uh, you just painted right out? Are you like uh, that little girl who, uh, Akiana, who went up to heaven and she could suddenly paint? Could you suddenly paint or did it take a while? <laughs> I wish I could paint like her. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually my paintings. Well, um, I just, went and took some pictures of, of one of my very first paintings. I went and visited my, my dad the other day and uh, he has a painting I did. Actually, it was my very, my second painting. Cause I did one was a calendar and the second one I did for him for, for father's day. And um, it's pretty good. I mean, I was like, yeah, it's just, it was a, it was a landscape. And I was like, oh, that's, that was pretty good considering I'd never done it before in high school. I love to do uh, paint by numbers. I did a lot of paint by numbers. Um, I just loved the detail of it, you know, the the tiny, tiny little details. I loved that. And I always felt like as I was doing it, I'm like, I could do this, you know. So I just always felt like I could paint, you know. And of course, I've it's evolved over the years and I've gotten much better. You know, my first picture of Holy Spirit was it looks like a third grader did it, but <laughs> I'm sure he put it on his fridge, as my pastor says. He put it on his fridge anyway. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. I'm sure that things have changed. How have things changed in your own belief of your own identity, believing who you are based on what he said? I think what really shifted for me, and I was just talking about this recently with someone, was that when I realized that there's a truth and there's lies and what we believe isn't always the truth. Absolutely. What God says is the truth. 
and they don't always match, but they need to match. And when I realized I had been believing a lot of lies about myself, about who God is, about um, what God does or uh, why he does things, you know, uh, lies about myself, you know, um, just my value, my worth, you know, I had a lot of rejection issues, you know, I had an orphan spirit. And so through all of that, when I realized that, you know, there really is an ultimate truth that is higher. God's truth is higher than my reality. It changed everything for me. And so I really began just studying who, what does God say? What is truth? You know, and that's really what my paintings are really, what does the Lord say? A lot of the personal paintings I've done for people, it's like, this is how the Lord sees you. Um, Because a lot of times we don't know how God sees us. But he wants us to, he wants us to know how he sees us, you know, so it's, it's evolved over the years, you know, as you, as you learn his voice, as you learn his ways, then you become more like him. Amen. We all do become more like him, which isn't that just amazing that we become more like the living God as we connect with him. Yeah. And as you, you were kind of saying, as he changes us, he didn't quite use those words, but as he changes us into what his image. Yes. Yes. So we're we're being transformed from glory to glory, and he wants us to become more like him. We're to be transformed in our mind, and it all starts right here, as uh, Romans talks about. You know, let's be tra- fully transformed and become who he says we are, and become like him as we give up things that are not like him. As we give up, you know, sin, and we give up things that displease him, and we choose to to choose the the narrow way as opposed to the the wide way, we become more like him. (laughs) Amen. And you were talking about those voices. There are voices that kind of dictate and tell us who we are, who we're supposed to be, or who we have been that we shouldn't have been. And that really kind of tends to tear us down instead of building us up. In what way did you experience that? The enemy, his voice is many times louder than the Holy Spirit's voice. And he's, he's forceful and he, he pushes and he tries to intimidate and he tries to bring fear and he tries to get, he twists and perverts truth. Even even the word, you know, he twists it to, you know, just as Jesus showed, you know, he quoted, you know, Satan quoted the scripture to Jesus, but he perverted it. He twisted it that made it not like God and God's voice is is quiet. He's peaceful. He's, 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 he's a shepherd. So he's wanting to lead and guide. He's not forcing and pushing. And um, I think a lot of times when I realized that, you know, even trying to make a decision and you're feeling rushed or you're feeling pushed or forced, then, you know, you need to just step back. You're like, okay, that's not God because God's going to lead me. He's going to direct me. He's going to prompt me that unction uh, when it's him and he wants us to follow and not that God doesn't push us because he does sometimes but but it's usually after he's already trying to get us to One go big push <laughs> yes <laughs> it's like that final come on yeah. <laughs> but yeah. as, but he's already been leading us and guiding us and and so it's it's a journey it's a journey with him. Absolutely. I feel like there's a lot of, uh, he's gentle, like you said, there's a lot of slow changes. And sometimes we don't even recognize that we've changed. And I, I, I know like if sometimes you go and meet with somebody you haven't met with in a long time. They're like, you are different. What's going on? You're like, oh, I didn't even notice. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It's really cool. Cause you know, now that I've, we're pastoring and we have people with us and just seeing the transformation in their lives in such a short period of time. It's just so beautiful. Just the way we respond to things, you know, our reactions to things um, that should be different. You know, we should, we should be changing how we feel about things. We're not always uh, emotional. We're sometimes we're, you know, we're, we can be led by our spirit instead of our feelings. And it's just a beautiful thing to, to see a transformed life. You right. know? Yeah. I think after we've had an encounter, we're so much more hungry for being like him because we recognize that he's so amazing and he still, he doesn't like uh, look at us like we're awful. He looks at us like we are, have so much potential. And so I think we want to live up to that potential and we want to become what he sees in us that we don't even necessarily see. So, so true. So, so true. And it's like the more you spend time in his presence, the more you get, you know, you're around him, 
You know, you just want to be like him and you want to please him. We want, you want to please the Lord. You know, he's our father. And just like all of us want our fathers to be pleased, you know, we want our heavenly father to be pleased. You know, I always say, I want, I want to make God's dreams come true. That's, that's my heart, you know? So whatever his dreams are, that's what I want. And so mm-hmm. it's not always, you know, he, he gets our will to line up with his will, you know, when we spend time with him because we want to please him yeah. um, and he gives us his desires. So it's really, it's really fun. Now, Amy, you're prophetic. So what are you seeing in the spirit? I mean, as you're going to these events, as you're painting, as you're listening, what are you seeing? Is there, are there some things that you're really seeing strongly right now? Absolutely. Right now, like that last painting I just did that you were talking about with all those vessels, you know, we are right now in the third grade awakening. I mean, awakening is here. Revival's here. What just happened to Asbury and what's, what's going, it's, it's spreading harvest. Uh, We just baptized 10 people in the last three weeks at our little tiny church. Um, So it's incredible because God's moving and people are wanting uh, are drawn to him. People are wanting to be awakened, you know, and it's beautiful. It's, it's, it's very beautiful. It's, it's a pure move of God and it's not hyped up. It's not, it's not in all the, you know, fireworks and, you know, it's just his presence. He's drawing people to himself. And of course he's doing it through the church first, you know, he's, he's gathering his people because uh, that, that the big, harvest net, uh, to catch the great, the the great harvest is, is being released. And so, uh, he's getting us ready. He's getting his bride ready. And, um, and so we all need to be working together. It's all hands on deck. Oh, I I heard that the other day, all hands on deck. (laughs) Yeah, I know. I feel like I've had the same kind of thing. I feel like he really is like you saying, like gathering his church, reawakening his church. He wants us to come alive so that we can bring others to life. You know, uh, I I know sometimes with uh, Elijah's bones, you know, brought somebody to life, but I think he doesn't want to do it that way. He wants to bring us to life (laughs) and then uh, send us out. And so I know he's doing a work in us. Yes. And he's using regular people to do miracles, you know, to lay hands on the sick, to, to, to. Uh, help cast out demons to bring resurrection, you know? So it's really beautiful that, you know, all of us, there's no, you know, the superstars in the church are, are no longer, that's, that's an old thing that was cool and good, but, and God used it, but now he wants to use everyone. He wants to use all of us. And uh, that's why I love the art. It's just one way he's using me. And, um, but he's using all of us with our gifts and our talents, our abilities, you know, at the grocery store, at our jobs, at school, he wants to use us everywhere. We just have to be willing. We just have to be that willing vessel and let his spirit pour in and through us, in and through us. It's, it's really beautiful. It's really, really cool. (laughs) Yeah. I feel like in this place, it's so dark that even the smallest candle you know, us, the smallest candle, we are so bright and we're shining in the darkness. And it's just different than than what we would think before. It was like, oh, we want the, the concert and the strobe lights and, you know, all that. And now it's like, no, we just want something real. Yes. Yes. So true. So true. A very authentic, pure move. And our, he wants us to rise and shine, rise and shine, you know, so that he can be glorified. It's not so people see us. It's so people see him. And, um, and he's using anyone who's willing, which hopefully all of us are willing, you know, all those that are his, uh, will be willing to be used, you know, it doesn't have to be a big thing. It could be just a little thing, but what we see as little is not little to the Lord because he uses it in a mighty, mighty way. So, uh, I mean, I've got this, this little bit of a platform, but I'm not Billy Graham, but I also can just go to Home Depot and talk to the, the person at the checkout counter and ask them how their day is and have a conversation and love on them. You know, it doesn't really always need to be this big, big thing. That's right. That's right. I I've been trying to really spend, you know, go to the same restaurants and, you know, get to know the servers and just really build relationship with the people, you know, at the post office and at my bank and at the, you know, the restaurants and, and get to know them and be, be that light, you know, right in the world we live in. Amen. 
Amen. Amy, I keep thinking about this, this vision, and I'm just going to bring it up. I feel like when we were talking about the Lord changing us gently, and maybe somebody's feeling them cha- being changed gently even now, but it's almost like the, the water lapping on, on the rocks or on the shore, you know, just as a gentle change, you know, just keeps coming and coming. Does that, I mean, does that resonate with you? Because I just, I thought of it three times. And so I love that. Yes. I love that. And it makes the rock so smooth, but it wasn't yeah. like a one-time splash, you know, it's just, it is, it's, it's a gradual thing. It's a continual thing. And as we just spend time with the, in his presence, you know, he does the changing, you know, a lot of times we think we got to fix ourselves, but that's not true. He, the Holy spirit fixes us. And that's just by us being obedient and compliant and saying, yes, and allow, you know, saying no to the things he says it's to say no to and say yes to the things he says yes to. Um, and it's gradual. It is gradual. But yet it's so uh, life changing. It's, you know, it's trans- life transforming. Right. And then people, like you said, people will see you that they uh, haven't maybe haven't seen you in a while, you know, and um, and they're and they're hungry to know what. Why are you so happy? <laughs> why are you so happy what is that Uh, because really christians we're supposed to be the happiest people on earth yeah oh i've been i've wrestled with the concept of joy for some reason for a long time but i heard the greatest thing from my pastor this week and he i think it was him who was talking about um and it was a conference i went to but that joy is like the light shining on us Mm -hmm. and just basking in that light you know like a like a flower or a plant just enjoying the sun and that's the joy it's not like you have to muster up some happiness about how good life is you know sometimes life isn't good but god is still shining you know absolutely absolutely and having an inner peace you know that 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 inner peace even in the midst of chaos uh is joyful It's joyful because, you know, there is so much chaos around us. There is so much tragedy around us happening. And yet we can still have that, that peace and that joy that carries us through and, and helps us to, to live the way he wants us to live. Yeah. Amen. What could somebody do if they want to step into that? What could they do? You know, I, like I said, I met the Lord in my living room. (laughs) you know, you don't have to go to a church to find God, though. It's good to go to church because that's where the people of God are. And you can build relationship with people uh, because you do need that. You need relationships. Uh, But just ask the Lord, say, Lord, I I want more of you. I want to know you. I want more of you. Um, I want to be changed by you. Open your word to me. Open your open the scriptures to me. Let me see it what you want me to see today, you know, spend a daily time with the Lord. I always tell people, you got to have a daily time with God. Um, It's not good enough to do once or twice a week, you know, because he wants to talk to you every day and his voice. It's a still small voice. It's, you know, it's very still. And he talks to us through all things around us, you know, through, through art, through billboards, through a license plate, you know, through nature, you know, he'll, He'll speak to your heart and, um, and you'll know it's him. You'll know it's him. So, and, and then he speaks through people too. So get some godly people in your life, you know, make friends. And if you don't have any, go to church, go to a church, a good church and, um, and meet some people, you know, you're not going to find, um, relationship just sitting at home, watching services online, you know? You know, that's, it's helpful to get some extra, extra food, but it's not really going to be life-giving to you. You need relate. We need relationships. We weren't created to be alone. Right. Right. Now, if somebody's struggling with blinders, you had a prayer that your husband prayed. Do you remember what that prayer is or something like it? Would you pray over those that are watching? Maybe their blinders would come off. Yes. Yes. So Lord, we just thank you right now. Holy Spirit that you remove all the blinders, remove everything, every way the enemy has blinded us from seeing you, Lord. We ask that you remove that. Let us see, just like Paul on the road to Damascus, how he scales literally fell from his eyes when he uh, got his eyes opened. 
Lord, let us have our eyes open to truth, to you, what you're saying, what you're doing, Lord. I thank you for every person that's watching this uh, video right now, Lord, that they would hear your voice. They would know you better. They would truly know who they are in you, who you've created them to be. Lord, that they would know and be able to recognize truth from lies. What is your truth? What is your truth? What you're saying? And Lord, I thank you, Father, that that each one of us would be transformed from glory to glory into your image so that we'd be more like you, Lord. I thank you, Father, how you're wanting to use each and every one of us. You're wanting to pour out through us and touch the world because you are shining bright. You are the bright, shining light. And I thank you, Lord, that each one of these today that's listening is a light for your kingdom. We give you glory, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Amy. Was there anything else that you thought you'd share today? Uh, I just, the the last thing I thought I, I really would love to encourage people is to really, I feel like we're in a time where the Lord really wants us to take our walk with him even to a greater measure. So even if we've been walking with the Lord for a long time and we spend time, uh, we have that intimate time with the Lord, the Lord wants to shift it up a notch. I feel like he's really wanting to encourage us to seek him differently and not, not get stuck in a rut, even in our quiet time with him. Sometimes I want to encourage people. Sometimes it's just a matter of getting a new Bible or finding a new place to meet with them, doing something different than what you've been doing and uh, see how he moves in that. You know, if you, if you like to sit quietly, maybe he wants you to, to pray um, out loud longer, or maybe he wants you to, if you, if you're a prayer and you're always out talking, maybe he's wanting you to be quiet <laughs> and listen, you know, there's something uh, he wants to shift um, in our quiet times. Cause he's really calling us to a greater place of intimacy right now in this hour. Amen. And just like that picture you painted with the oil, it's time that we really need a lot of oil, which is his presence. We need his presence, the connection, him pouring into us, because I feel like in the next days and stages, we're going to need all that oil because it's not going to get necessarily easier from here on out. That's right. That's absolutely right. And we don't want to be like those, uh, those not wise virgins, but we want to be like the wise who had the oil. We took the time. We took the time and we spent time in his presence and we, we know him. Um, So it's important. It's really important right now. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Do that guys. However, it needs to be different or the same. Just to spend time. Ask him, how, what do you want to do? You want to go on a walk? You want to drive in the car? What do you want to do? Driving a motorcycle. It's almost spring. You don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Amy. Was there anything about your book you want to share a little bit about um, where they can get it or what it's about more so than you have? Yes. Well, I shared a little bit about it already. This is what it looks like. Um, you can get it on my website. Um, my website is amyrylander.com. And on there you can buy any, I have a lot of original art pieces still there. I've got lots of prints, any painting you've ever seen of mine, I can usually make it as a print. And so we have different sizes and, um, and, or if you'd like me to come and do an art workshop, where you live, you know, reach out to me and we'll see if we can schedule that. Or if you want me to come speak at your uh, church or your conference or your retreat or whatever, um, I do that as well. So um, just reach out. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. Look her at your retreat. That sounds fun. I love that idea. (laughs) Thank you, Amy. It's been fun to talk with you. And I love that you're bringing the identity of Christ into the story for his glory because he wants us to shine. He has been waiting to reveal his sons and daughters in in the heavenlies, in the universe, in the kingdom. So it's just exciting. But thank you so much, Amy. My pleasure. Amen. Listen, guys, I want you to make sure, make sure, guys, that you like, share, and subscribe. Mostly, I mean, I love you to subscribe. I love you to like, thumbs up. You more, more than anything, share this video so that other people understand that God is still moving. He wants to take their blinders off so they can see him better. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.